Hello, I am about to do a steroid injection on a very interesting patient, so I thought I'd talk about it a little bit. He's an ultrasound scan by myself. He's had an MRI scan, which is what you can see on screen, and I'm going to go through that shortly. It's an interesting case. He has perineal tendinopathy. Perineal um, muscle and tendon come around the ankle. I'll put an image on the side, on the other side of the screen. And patients often get pain on the outside of the ankle. This particular patient is getting pain from his perineal tubercle just before the, the actual muscle tendon goes under the cuboid and it goes across the foot. Um, he's actually got an enlarged perineal tubercle also, which is interesting because that may be one of the reasons why he's got this. So you can get a uh, stenosing tenosynovitis if you have an enlarged perineal tubercle. I suspected, actually, I hold my hand up, I suspected he had a fifth metatarsal fracture because all of the signs and symptoms, all of the clinical management that we did of him, clinical tests we did of him, were indicating a fifth metatarsal stress fracture. But it was the MRI report that sh actually shed some light on it. Um, so it's, that was very, very interesting. Now, this is a T1 SAG image, and you can see a slightly high signal there. Um, I've also got a stir image here as well. Those of you that don't know what a stir image is, a stir is when the fat is suppressed, so fluid shows up. Um, and you can see, actually, that the perineus longus, you can see a high signal from the perineus longus as it's just about to shoot underneath the foot. Uh, and just there, there you go. Um, so it's, it's a very interesting case. Um, we are going to do an injection on him. First injection video I'm making with the mask on should be interesting. We've fulfilled all the clinical uh, guidelines regarding corticosteroid injections during this period. Um, there is a clinical need for it. He is in pain and um, he's not at risk and all the other things that you have to bear in mind nowadays when you're doing a corticosteroid injection. Um, so this should be really interesting. Uh, we're going to do ultrasound guided, so let's have a look at what we can do. We are going to be doing an injection on this gentleman who's got perineus longus tendinopathy. So, um, if you come a bit closer, I'm telling my cameraman to come across. There's two, there's two tendons here. There's the uh, perineal brevis and the perineus longus. Now, this here is the perineal tubercle. This gentleman's got some, a very interesting case where he's got an enlarged perineal tubercle. The perineal tubercle is very interesting because it splits the perineus brevis and perineus longus. They're actually probably a bit closer than that. Um, the brevis muscle comes on top and attaches to the base, the, to the base of the fifth metatarsal. The perineus longus comes underneath uh, the perineal tubercle and then shoots under the groove in the cuboid and attaches to the first metatarsal. And what the perineus longus does, it plantar flexes the foot and everts the foot. It's supplied by the superficial perineal nerve. I think it's L4, L5S1. Don't quote me on that, but that's what I think it is. Most people that get perineus longus tendinopathy get pain around here. This gentleman is one, one, one of the rare, rare patients that's getting it when it shoots under the foot um, and just as it's going under the cuboid. There are a couple of other things that can occur here. You can get an accessory perineal muscle called the perineal cautious, which he doesn't have, and the MRI confirmed that. You can also have an ossicle, uh, which is a small piece of bone, uh, like, a, like a floating uh, bone that can cause pain. He doesn't have that, um, because the MRI has confirmed that. What he does have is tendinopathy, quite a bit of tendinopathy here. He's a avid runner. I mean, he uh, was running mountains and hills and with a backpack and doing quite a bit. And normally this happens if you overuse the particular uh, structure. The fact that he's got an enlarged perineal tubercle means that he's at risk of it anyway, because you can get a like stenosis tenosynovitis if you have an enlarged perineal tubercle. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to be kind to him 
because he's a nice gentleman. I'm going to give him some local anesthetic. If he wasn't nice, I wouldn't have given it to him. Uh, I'm going to give him uh, a little bit of local anesthetic to knock out the superficial perineal nerve and the sural, just in case. And then we're going to give him a officer guided cortical steroid injection because we've taken all the precautions. And we're going to do it in this area to try and um, to try and affect symptoms. He's also had an orthotic with a four degree wedge on the outside of the foot, uh, rear foot and the cuboid to offload him. And as with all my injection patients, he's got a, a rehab program, which is progressive because the injection on his own isn't going to do it. And I've told him that it's, it's all three things. The orthotics, the rehab and the injection gives him a really good chance to get back to it. And then when he returns back to running, he's going to go back into it progressively. So slowly back. I don't want you going back to just doing what you were doing before. A gradual return back to activity and I'm going to give you further guidance on that. So let's get started. Okay, one, two. You okay? Yeah. We're just going to put up a little sausage here. Superficial perineal nerve is quite, as the name suggests, superficial. The deep perineal nerve, we have to go in much deeper. Uh, we're using scandinus because it's quite quick acting. You feel a little scratch? Yeah, it's fine. You alright? Yeah. So. The serial nerve just runs across there. You, know, you don't need a lot for this. Well done. Well done, that's mate. The fifth metatarsal, that's perineal brevis just attaching into. Yeah. What I've got on screen at the moment is the perineal tubercle just there, which is the bright bit on the left hand side of the screen, and the perineus longus, which is just shooting underneath. So we need to inject along that area there. This is chloroprex, this is what we use for injections, and I want to give the area, sometimes you've got to give it a bit of a shape, area a good clean. Gonna feel a little scratch. One, two. You okay? Yeah. Did you feel anything? No. Okay, you can see it filling up. Look at that. Mm -hmm. so I'm just gonna go in a bit deeper. And I'm almost following Perineus Longus around. before it goes under the cuboid. We want to flood the area. You can see the area being flooded. You doing well? Yeah, okay. Good man. So the injection's all done, it went really well. Uh, I'm anticipating this patient's gonna get back to doing what he wants. We're gonna put a dressing on it. Um, and we are gonna keep an eye on this patient. We're gonna see how he gets on. Um, and I'm anticipating he'll be fine. Uh,